<laughs> Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, in your goodness and in your grace, pour out upon your love upon Katie and George and their family and friends as they're gathered here to celebrate this beautiful occasion. And God, you've blessed us to be able to witness this celebration. Just as you gladden the wedding at Canaan Galilee, pour out your love upon this wedding in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is for 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith can, that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass. For we know in part what we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror, then we will see perfection face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Our reading today is from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus in what is now Turkey. There's an old expression that the church is the bride of Christ. In this passage, you may hear echoes of the golden rule to love one another and to love your neighbor as yourself. These are selections from Ephesians chapter 5, starting with verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he may sanctify the church. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Therefore, a man shall leave his mother and father and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying it is like the relation be between Christ and the church. Therefore, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife love and respect her husband. Kitty and George, Julie and Scott, Tom and Jenny, and family and friends, grace and peace. And may God's love be poured out upon all of you today. What a celebration, what a great place to be. Words from scripture, we hear that in 1 John 4, 7, 8, Beloved, let us love one another, 
for love is of God. Whoever loves is born of God and knows God, for God is love. We gather here on this beautiful day, George and, and Katie, and I know you will remember this day for the rest of your life. It is a joy to partake of in this celebration. One thing that I would like you to remember, however, is two words. Love wins. Love wins. And I can tell you right now, after being at the, the gathering last night, your family and your friends love you, Katie and George, intimately in a wonderful way. And it's obvious that they have been won by your love. And that love will continue because you continue this journey with your family and friends. And love will continue to win. The more you love each other, the more you f reflect that love for each other. As you know, Katie, I, I have two daughters. And every time I do a wedding, I, I wonder what I would tell my daughters on their wedding day. And I probably the first thing I would tell them is to call call every day <laughs> but truly I would I would tell I would tell my daughters that or my son I would tell them that your parents Katie and George love you dearly they love you dearly and their love will always be there always be there and Scott and Julie you have reflected that love to each other and to Katie in a wonderful way and I know George, Tom, and Jenny have done that for you, loved you, and been there for you. They will always be there. They will always be there for you and continue to love and cherish you. In the midst of good times, in the midst of bad times, they'll be there for you. Second thing I would tell my daughter is, or son would be, be steadfast. Be steadfast in all the things you do. Be steady and know that, that what you do from the heart matters in life. And then finally, I would tell them to be faithful to each other, but not only faithful to each other, but faithful to your friends and your family. And know that when you look to the cross, you know that God, when we don't always, are not always faithful, God is always faithful because God's love always wins. God's love always wins. Katie, I know you are very gifted. I know you, George, are very gifted and a wonderful uh, gift to our, our community and the world and I know that God is going to do good things with both of you Katie you are a person who loves children and I have to say that I've Katie has done children's sermons for me at, at church and I still remember the last one you did at church about uh, uh, Jesus and, and Mary uh, traveling to Bethlehem and how it's a distance between Venice and uh, Orlando and so <laughs> You, you are very gifted at working with children, and I know that your studies in education and reading is going to be vital to your future and vital to the, the children that you shape, and how important it is for, for us to know that there are teachers out there that are willing to, to teach and be patient with children to teach them how to read, because reading is the most important thing that we do in life. It opens doors to everything that you can imagine, and so... Uh, a gift that you bring. And I'm sure you know many children's stories, and all the children's stories that are their, the most popular ones are all about love. The runaway bunny, uh, the velveteen rabbit, I love you forever, I love you always, those stories are all about love. And when you do those things, when you share the love with those children, love will win them over. George, you are an amazing uh, studier and uh, person that that loves working with 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 the law uh, things that you've talked about and about a year ago George said that you know he was on this path to become a lawyer but he always wanted to work with people at helping the the society with with legal things but he also said that he would uh, he would consider going into uh, political life. And George, if you do go into political life, I will always vote for you. I guarantee you that. I will vote for you because you are a very dedicated man and care about uh, the world and care about what you're doing. And I know that whatever you do will be a blessing to our society. And 
I just want you to know that the, one of the greatest commandments, the greatest laws that we have is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, love your neighbor as yourself. And she's your neighbor. <laughs> and remember that. And love will win, certainly win. Today, Katie, your beloved is George. George, today, your beloved is Katie. Even though we know that your, your wedding and uh, weddings are, are, are made in heaven, but they're also lived here on earth. And sometimes that's not always easy. But a love that wins is patience. And I guarantee you that in your wedding, in your marriage, you'll need that patience and you'll have that patience. Love that wins is kind. And I know that you will not have a hard time being kind because you are very kind people. And love is not irritable. And I know that it, it's easy in marriage to be irritable, but think about how important it is not to be irritable in your life. And love is not rude. It is not arrogant. And you know that uh, how humbling it is to be married and to find out that you're not always perfect in certain things in your life. And if, if you haven't heard the story about how the two of them uh, got engaged, it's well worthy of listening to and sharing. And all, we also know that love does not insist on its own way. And love that wins uh, is one that uh, hopes all things, a love that wins, believes all things, and a love that wins endures all things. And of course, the greatest love that we have and a love that will always win is a symbol of that cross behind me that reminds us that we're always to look to that sign to know that that love will always win and that God will always be with you in that love. I just pray, God, to God, Katie and George, that God blesses you on this day and that you can celebrate this winning love that you have for each other. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you again for Katie and for George and for their parents and for the love that they have poured out upon them. Continue to bless them, continue to give them this excitement about their lives. And we thank you, God, for this good and gracious gift. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now for the important part. had this part right. George, repeat after me. I take you, Katie. I take you, Katie. To, to be my wife. To be my wife. From this day forward. From this day forward. To join with you. To join with you. And share. And share. All that is to come. All that is to come. And I promise. And I promise. To be faithful. To be faithful. To you. To you. Until death parts us. Until death parts us. Katie, repeat after me. I take you, George. I take you, George. To be my husband. To be my husband. From this day forward. From this day forward. To join with you. To join with you. And share. And share. All that is to come. All that is to come. And I promise. And I promise. To be faithful to you. To be faithful to you. Until death parts us. Until death parts us. Good job. That's the most difficult part. You did. <laughs> Can I have the rings, please? Someone else took care of those things for you. Yeah, yeah, I do. Now we're in trouble. Let, let me hold on to the rings for a second here. I'm going to bless the rings. May God bless these rings as you wear them. Be reminded of the promise that you have shared on this day and that that promise might be with you forever. And that with these rings, you might also know the promise that God gives us, that God is always with us in and through the cross. Amen. Take Katie's ring and repeat after me. Katie, I give you this ring. Katie, I give you this ring. As a sign. As a sign. Of my love. Of my love. And faithfulness. In faithfulness. George, I give you this ring as a sign, as a sign of, my love, of my love and faithfulness, 
and faithfulness. You face me and hold each other's hands. Katie and George, by the promises before God and the presence of all who are gathered here, their family and friends, have bound themselves together as to one another as husband and wife. Blessed be the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put us under. Amen. I invite all who are gathered here to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing, Katie and George. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I introduce to you our newest married couple, Katie and George Rudebusch. You may kiss the bride. This thing a color edges I can handle it this thing a color yeah, I must I'll get around to it I ain't ready a crazy little thing called love this thing a color it cries it ain't a cradle all night it swings it jacks Shakes all over like a jellyfish. I kinda like it. Crazy little thing called love. There goes my baby. Yes, he knows how to rock and roll. She drive me crazy. She gave me hot and cold fever, then she leave me in a cuckoo sweat. I gotta be cool. Relax, get hit, get on my tracks, take a back seat, hitchhike, take a long ride on my motorbike till I'm ready. This crazy little thing called love. And take a long ride on my motorbike till I'm ready. The crazy little thing called love. The crazy little thing called love.
up in the hills of California Home is just another word for you Well, I never had a place I could call my very own But that's all right, my love, cause you're my home Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated at this time. We'll have a blessing. What a great evening and a, a great day. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this gorgeous day and for, for George and Katie and for the love that they share with each other. We know, God, that you bless us as we sit around the table, as we break bread together, because we know that your presence is, celebrates uh, the joy and the love that you have given us in this family, in this family friendship in this great day. Grace us with your presence in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom we pray. Amen. So I want to start by thank you. Thanking everyone for coming tonight. I, I, I saw in the paper this week that there was two women that got in a fight over a box of Purell somewhere in Missouri where there wasn't even a single uh, coronavirus infection. And I honestly think that uh, when I was coming into this week, I thought, boy, we're going to have a lot of cancellations. Honestly, I don't want anybody to raise their hands, but I know a lot of you thought about it. <laughs> Actually, I mean, there, there's a panic that's taking place. And I look around and I see you, the, you know, the folks that came here, and it's just a reflection of the love that you have for George and Katie and our families. And I want to thank you for presenting that love by your presence. Thanks. So tonight, my theme of my talk is going to be threads. Threads. The threads that lace through time, the threads that connect Katie and George, and the threads that turn into ropes that bond us together. The other day I was in my mom's room and I saw a picture of my grandmother, Katie's grandmother, Happy. Her name was Happy Terhune. And I looked at her and I saw the resemblance to Katie and I thought of the resemblance of Katie not only physically but emotionally. So imagine that you're a mother in the Great Depression and your demeanor is such and your presence and being there and appreciating all was such that your nickname that everybody refers to you as is happy. Happy is Katie and Katie is happy. <laughs> and I can't help but recognize that thread as it comes down through the generations through my mom to Katie and uh, it just warms my heart. Many of you know something about Katie, which is not only is she incredibly bright, but she's also really funny. And I can tell you, to be the father of this young lady is one of the, I mean, it is the thrill of my life. One of the thrills of my life. I don't want to, but really the thrills of my life. She is just such a joy, and she has been Forever. I mean, give me, let me give you an example. <laughs> so one time we're on this vacation in Colorado. Katie was still in her car seat, three to four years old. And I was talking to my other daughters and Katie about body types, as dads do. <laughs> I, said, I said to Allie, Allie, you've got a body built for cross country. Kimmy, you've got a body built for volleyball. And Katie's in her car seat, and she says, Katie's got a body built for watching TV. <laughs> she was three years old. It has been that way from the very beginning. And, you know, as a father, every time your child enters in a relationship, you kind of look for signs of if this person is maybe something special or not. And I remember one of the first times when I realized that George is going to be something special, they just started dating, and uh, Katie loves barbecue. 
as you can tell by the food selection tonight. Thank you, by the way, workers and staff tonight. Delicious Southern barbecue. That's a thread that she shares with her Uncle Brent back there. The love of barbecue. Yeah. And uh, they decided that they were going to get the 10 best barbecue restaurants in Virginia, and they were going to go visit. And so they decide to go to this place, and I think it's, is it, um, I forget the name of the place. Uh, Winston, no, Winchester, Winchester, Virginia. So they go down to Winchester, Virginia. It's like a two-hour drive, and they go to order. And Katie's got this voice that she calls her candy voice. And it's like this real bad southern accent. How many of you friends of hers have heard the candy voice? Uh, it is obnoxious. So George, young man, didn't realize that this was a test. He had three things that he could do. One is he could ignore it. Wrong decision. Worse, he could have said, shh, you're embarrassing me. That would have been a bad decision, and you'd be driving home. <laughs> what George did is he broke out in this clug cable. Well, geez, Miss Katie, are you know what <laughs> So Katie calls Julie and I the next day. She's so excited <laughs> because here's a guy that can be as silly as she is, and they did the entire lunch in character. <laughs> it was due to Claire. I pray that she would find someone that shared her thread of humor and finding, like her grandma, happy, the fun in hard times and good times. You know, another value that just warms my heart that both of them share, the, uh, the, the, the thread that they share, is the thread of family. So we've heard about George and his great academic success and awards that he's gotten. He, he shares, <laughs> they were saying nerd, by the way. <laughs> Said the guy in a bow tie. Um. <laughs> so anyway, um, George uh, was Phi Beta Kappa, and I don't think he ever got a B as an undergrad, which is a thread that he shares with Uncle Brent as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let that one sink in. <laughs> so he's got all these awards, and I was talking to Katie. I said, Katie, what meant the most to him? What award that he got or what recognition that he got that meant the most to him? And she didn't hesitate. She said that George shared with him what meant the most to him was, in, was when he was able to enter UVA Law School and he was able to go to his grandfather, Bill Brown, an alumnus of UVA, and tell him that that's where he's going. <laughs> and from a father's perspective, it's a, just another story. But if you realize the importance of that beginning, it is so incredibly important to have that common thread of the value of family. Another thread that they share that just warms my heart is the thread of working on their relationship. And again, it's a, it's a silly story, but it's emblematic of something really more deep and more important. So they were just starting to date, and uh, Katie was a first-year teacher at Prince William County, which was a difficult district. She was at a new school, which those of you that are educators know that oftentimes new schools have very difficult students. And she had a difficult class and she was a first year teacher. George was in his first year in his public policy law degree thing. <laughs> so every week they were trying to find a way to get together. Well, one week George calls up and says, Katie, I'm sorry, I've got this public policy paper that I've got to get out. It's going to be 48 hours of nonstop cranking. I've got to sequester myself in my, in my room. Thursday comes along. George is like, where is this going? <laughs> Thursday comes along, and Katie shares that she had a particularly tough week. So George was true to himself, and he sequestered himself and worked on the paper for 48 hours straight. But instead of doing it in his dorm room, he did it in his Starbucks <laughs> in Alexandria, right across the street from Katie's apartment complex. Yeah. 
And what a father sees is not a man who is selfless, but a man who thinks of himself less. George and Katie, you both have your goals. You both have your objectives. You both have your northern stars. And I am just so excited to see the way in which you're making decisions together that allow you both to hit your northern stars while also being supportive of each other. That just warms my heart. Yeah. <sighs> now, the last one's going to be tough for me. The last thing I want to talk about is a theme that we had tonight from Tom and Tom's reading and uh, Pastor Hall's message, and that's the, the thought of love and how St. James says that love is God and God is in all of us. Hmm. So this Christmas, my family had a get together, as we always do. My brother Brent brought over. Uh, his family, which, you know, can be a little ruckus if you watch us on the dance floor last night. And when we, when we say the blessing at the Pinkerton house, we've got an awful lot to be thankful for, so we get a little rowdy. And at the end of the blessing, I know a lot of you might remember this that were there, my mom said something that was, it was inel ineligible. It was like she was speaking in tongues or something, you know. And um, she, we were holding hands, and she lifted her hands up, and she said, uh, I don't know who you are, <coughs> but I know that I love you. And what it tells me is that life takes and can take away everything but love. It can take away all of the things that you put in front of love will ultimately disappear. So we have these threads going from the Rudabish family through their generations. We've heard about that. And from the Pinkerton to Hune, Brown, Thompson, Cornette families. And they're great threads. And they're generations that have been going through this together. And I see that we're tying the knot of these great threads together. And I couldn't be more proud and happy of these two. And we are all here to celebrate that tying in the knot. So, to Katie and George and tying the knot. Well said. And now we'll have some words for our best man, Carl, ladies and gentlemen. I guess that's me. Good evening, everyone. So for you, those of you that do not know me, my name is Carl. I'm George's older brother. And I have the distinct pleasure of being the best man at this wedding. Um, and I've had the distinct pleasure of getting to know George uh, for the past 26 years. Um, for those of you that did not know George at a young age, he was not always this well-groomed, this well put together. <laughs> He was your typical grubby little kid until third or fourth grade, when for some reason he became enamored with high fashion. <laughs> he became so enamored, in fact, that he ended up spending years of allowance money on a designer Gucci belt from Nordstrom's <laughs> while out at the mall one day as with friends. Needless to say that my mom, Jenny, was mortified and she made him return the belt, but George has been a super sharp Jeff man ever since. George was not, he was not always this book smart either. For years growing up, my mom, uh, Jenny, joked that her three eldest children would go to college locally at George Mason University, while her youngest son, George, would go to the local community college, Nova, <laughs> instead. <laughs> but sometime around ninth or 10th grade, George decided that grades mattered, um, and he turned on his smarts, and he hasn't looked back ever since. Um, but George is like that. He's always had this superpower where he can be hyper-focused on some idea, goal, or activity and achieve it no matter what. And George was that way when he first met Katie, too. I remember coming home from medical school on a spring break and first learning that George, George and Katie were a thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was amazed by the fervor which with George described meeting Katie for the first time. Their first date over Chile and their first expedition for ice cream in Old Town Alexandria. George was head over heels for Katie from the start, unlike I'd ever seen him before, and I could tell that Katie and George, Katie was gonna be a new life focus for George. Over the past four or so years, I've had the immense pleasure of getting to know Katie. Katie is so intelligent, hilarious, and gorgeous. <laughs> She's so easygoing at the exact right times in life, and then strong-willed at, the at the other exact right times in life. And it's the perfect combination to deal with George's, um, uh, George's unique personality. <laughs> <laughs> George has been my best friend in life for 26 years, and I can't imagine a better woman for him to spend his life with. Congratulations to the both of you. I love you both so much. I wish you both a lifetime of love and happiness. Here's to the newlyweds. Now please welcome our maids of honor, Allie and Kim. Hi guys, we are Kim and Allie, Katie's sisters. Yes, very exciting. And we are so excited to be here today to celebrate. Thank you, you're always your cousins, got you. Thank you. Um, so Katie is a girl. Bear, closer, okay. The Pooh Bear costume, not only at Halloween's 93 to 97, but every single elementary school theme party since then. It's a fabulous Pooh Bear costume. Um, the time she dressed like a goth for a, costume, for a cousin's birthday and an old woman for high school spirit week. While the other girls dressed as cutesy hillbillies, Katie pulled out the fake teeth. She was even a Greek salad once for toga day. You would... <laughs> You would think this means she would want all the attention all the time, but that would be wrong. <laughs> One of Katie's greatest qualities is that she makes people feel seen and loved when she's with them. No matter what her day has been like, she'll ask questions and she'll genuinely listen to your answers. You would think, with a big personality, that her light out, outshine other people's light. But she never lets anybody shrink to the shadows. Once at, a batch, at her bachelorette party, I was feeling emotional. You can tell she never does. Big surprise. <laughs> 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 and I apologize for something. And she said, don't worry, you're with family. When a friend or sister is feeling stressed, they know that they can always count on Katie. I know when I was feeling really stressed about going back to work after Izzy, she said, you can always call on me. I will be there anytime you need me. I am only a few states away. <laughs> I live in Texas, she lives in Virginia. It's a distance, but she will always be there for you. And that is something really special. That's who, she, that's who she is. She radiates warmth and opens her arms to bring in other people so they can feel it too. We're so glad that she found George. A similar light bearer. Okay, sorry guys. Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> a similar light bearer. He has the same talent for question asking, for listening, for empathy. This is a repeat story, but it's so good. We're gonna tell it twice. <laughs> They're both lovers of funny accents. <laughs> On one of their first dates, they went to a barbecue place and <laughs> one of them said, should we do Southern genteel accents or Southern hillbilly accents? The other said, marry me. We mean not literally, but that was a sign to each of them, I'm sure. 
for how well suited they become. They challenge each other, they support each other, they laugh together. On a family vacation last year, they pretended to, pretended to be Meriwether and Lewis, the explorers. They called out to each other, and you can hear the names through the shivering aspens. We hope you never stop reaching out for each other and supporting each other like we have always felt so supported by the both of you. Here's to Katie and George. And now a few words from our beautiful bride. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Hello. Um, so I watched this show called Marvelous Miss Maisel. And she talked at her wedding. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do that. That's a great idea. Um, so I, there's a few reasons I knew I wanted to talk tonight. And... One is because I wanted to thank each of you for being here. Um, I think I was saying to someone earlier that getting to have dinner with any of you on a given night would be a treat and would be a blessing. And so doing it with all of you at the same time is like just the most overwhelming and joyous and just beautiful thing that I've ever been a part of. So truly thank you for being here for me and for being here for Georgie. We, uh, I, I will never be able to thank you enough. Um, and the other reason I knew I wanted to talk is uh, because I want to tell you a little bit more about this man I decided to marry um, <laughs> and how that happened and how it came to be and kind of give you a, a small snapshot of, a, of how that happened. Um, <laughs> So as many as you know, we went to the College of William and Mary. Go Tribe, Go tribe. thank you. Tribe. Roll Tribe. Um, but George and I, we didn't really know each other at William and Mary. Um, we, were, uh, we were aware of each other. We were in similar circles. We were both tour guides, so we're great at walking backwards. Um, <laughs> but we didn't know each other. And then after graduation, we, we reconnected at a Christmas party. And I remember I kind of saw George from across the room, and I went up and I started chatting with him. And he remembered all these details about me from the few times we had talked in college. And I was like, whoa, stalker, but okay. <laughs> it's fine. Um, and we, <laughs> we talked that night for probably seven hours. I mean, it was one of those things where it was a Christmas party and then everyone went to a bar afterwards. And so we're standing in this bar and we started playing this game called Odds. If you're not aware, <laughs> it's essentially like truth or dare. And so I dare George to go up to this random table of like DC frat boys, and kind of like what you see right up here, kind of <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I, d I dare him to go sit down and pretend like he knew them, just sit down and say, you know, hey guys, how's it going? Like, thanks for saving me a seat. And George agrees to do it. He's like, oh yeah, I'll do that, absolutely. And he, he says, but I'll only do it if you come with me. And so he goes to like give me a high five and as he's high fiving me, he like grabs my hand like this. And I said, are we really doing this? And he goes, if you're there, I'm there. I mean, it was cute, but in my head I was like, okay, dude's got lines, like, okay. Like, <laughs> it, was so, it was so sweet, but I was just so taken aback. And so I think for, for George, I know for George, that, that was it for him. Like he dove into the deep end of love and wanting to be with me and loving me and wanting a relationship. And it was, I was not at that point. I, it took me a little while. I kind of was, <laughs> I was kind of waiting in the shallow ends and he's like body surfing through the waves. Um, which if you've ever been to the beach with us, that's exactly how it is. Uh, after George's sunscreen has soaked in, he runs and he jumps and he, he goes through the waves. And I'm like, oh, my feet, I need to get ready for the water and I need to make sure. Anyways, so 
I was never really sure at what moment I kind of joined him in the, the deep end, so to speak. Um, and then this summer, I was cleaning out my, my apartment. We were getting ready to move to our new apartment. And I found a journal that I kept when we first started dating. <laughs> it says, eat cake for breakfast. So, um, and in the journal, I found, this, I found an entry that I had written when George and I had first started dating. And it was after my dear friend Brooke's wedding. Hey, Brookie. Um, anyway, so I just want to read it to you because I think it shows kind of when I, when I joined him. Um, so it says, hold on, let me get to the page. <laughs> dear diary. <laughs> just kidding. It doesn't say that. <laughs> Um, it says, I don't think people understand how deeply you can love someone until you do. The love I feel for George at this point in our relationship is amazing. I can so see our lives together. If I marry him, I know it will be a life of love, laughter, and respect. He shows me that every day that he loves me completely. Seeing him at Brooke's wedding was so freeing. He can fit in with my people. He loves my family and what they stand for, and I am so blessed. I'm trying to not get ahead of myself, but I think this is my guy and what an adventure that will be. So, Georgie, <laughs> I want to say to you on our wedding is um, thank you for waiting for me to get to the deep end. <laughs> and baby, if you're there, I'm there. <laughs> Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. And now we'll have our mother's son dance. Yeah, you might have a mom. 
got a mom like mine who loves till the end. She's my best friend. Ain't nobody mom like mine. She's my world. She's my heart. There's no denying. Yeah, I'm her boy. No matter what, even when I'm lying. Oh, she loving me, loving me, loving me, loving me, loving me, loving me, like nobody else. And I'm telling and telling and telling and telling you all my love, love myself. Yeah, you might have a mom, she might be the bomb. Ain't nobody got a mom like mine that loves till the end, my best friend. Nobody got a mom like mine. Got a mom like mine.